Uh, last but not least, uh, Marcelo Rodriguez is the president of Grupo Parada. And uh, when you start targeting by nationality inside the US, okay, when you start looking for where people live, and we were talking about the Equatorian uh, process, political process, and we were talking about the Mexican political process and others, okay, it becomes a totally different game because sometimes we do not self tell that we are from one country or another. But somehow the behavior, and this is where Esteban I think was going, is the behavior, I don't need for him to tell me he's Argentinian. If he's looking for the results of uh, El Boca, I know he's Argentinian, he has to. There's no way, okay, somebody's gonna go there without, without that background, okay? Uh, it happens in the same with uh, Barca versus uh, 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 playing in Spain, Okay, Real Madrid, that will, you know that it's somebody that has this background, okay, because they're actually looking for that results, okay? Or maybe they're just betting on it, but that would be weird, okay? So tell us more about how do you guys got involved in this? How do you go faster into the digital? Because this is something I heard. You guys were much faster targeting digitally than a lot of other people, okay? Well, a little bit of history because I came uh, to the United States like around 10 years ago. And uh, I came after graduating. I have my background is technology. I'm a systems engineer. But I didn't like to keep working on the bank there. So uh, I just uh, listened to a bad advice of people that just go to the US and everything's going to be fine. It's <laughs> only grows on trees and things like that. So that wasn't the case from the color. So as you can imagine, that's never the case so like I was here like okay what I do now and uh, I only had two things which was Spanish and the internet so the way I use it is like I in that time there was a Craigslist um, listing mm -hmm. uh, so I start creating okay how do I, I, I improve my English because my English was not at all so the only thing I had I didn't have a lot of money I only had Spanish and computers so I did a, a ad and I said okay uh, it must be some people that want to learn English. I have Spanish, so I created a group. The group started coming in, so I started researching everything online. And the places to, to, to meet up in New York. So that's how I started like, okay, this is the place. We start meeting, and those, have, right now those are, uh, some of them are my clients. Anyhow, back then, I started creating this group. We started like, I started learning English. They started learning Spanish, and then, by the internet itself, I started like, okay, now I need to do what I do, which is I need to, in that time there was websites. So I wanted to start doing websites, but nobody knew my work. So I started researching around my area because I, 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 I couldn't travel so much. So I had to go around my place and I found these, uh, these uh, nonprofits. So I went there and I talked to them and I said, okay, I can start doing uh, your website for free. Of course, they said, yeah, of course, come in. That was my first operation, right, right there. It was like my office there. So again, I started like researching because I said, what's my strongest point is Spanish, uh, Hispanic. So I started researching Spanish organizations in New York and that's how I started meeting up with the political nonprofits, my community. And the more I researched, the more I found people that were like, oh, you're Ecuadorian and we found on the internet. But there was no like one place that you, you can meet. So then just, uh, I started doing a lot of work for companies, but that was only uh, technical work, and uh, websites, uh, development pretty much. But then I realized that that was not the place I wanted to be, so I wanted to, to do something else. I went, uh, to, I went to take a class, and then that's when it hit me. It's like, okay, again, your, your strong point is Spanish, and you're Hispanic, why not do Hispanic marketing? So I was like, yes. So because I already had a lot of connections, but that w those connections was mostly like nonprofits that they were not, uh, they were small in a sense, but then I start targeting them most more, more efficiently because, because of necessity, there was not, they didn't, didn't have enough budget. So the internet was the only way they can do it. And because nobody else was doing that in the sense of pay-per-click or anything, you didn't have enough competitors. 
So a lot of companies, a lot of people start asking, but is there any is there anybody looking for Spanish? And the, the question, the, the answer was yes, a lot. And if you see the trends until now, I think lately the Spanish speak Spanish keywords have grown like three times in the last uh, three years. Spanish keywords in the United States, and we're talking about every industry. So we 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 used to work with uh, healthcare organizations, um, education, and uh, politics, and entertainment. And when you see the, the 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 commonality is that there is not enough information and there is not enough uh, content that uh, that connects them because you have many searches done in in, in, in in YouTube and Google, but there are not there is not enough content. So that's how we start like connecting. So when when government start, can, could you outreach the community? We're like, yeah, we've been always doing that, and we start seeing this big gap between what brands do when they broadcast or they want try to reach the Hispanic market and small communities that at the end are big communities because you get um, all the consulates have a huge pool of, of, of constituents and they are all connected to this place and they have huge numbers. That's when you see festivals, when you go to see event places that it's full of Ecuadorians, full of uh, Mexicans, full of uh, anybody. So. That's how we started. Now, how do we start connecting to them? We took the data from the, from, from the census, and we started looking at, okay, where are the most Ecuadorians? Where do they live? Based on that, we start doing behavioral on, on Facebook. So if I ask you right now, do you like Korea, or you don't like Korea, and if you don't have an answer to that, I can tell you you're not Ecuadorians. But if you've had any opinion on that, that's how we start building it because we said, do you like chukchukaras or you don't like things that you wouldn't know if you're not Ecuadorian. And then we have the zip codes there and based on behavioral, that's why our, our campaigns start getting very, very targeted, very efficient. And the companies were not doing, uh, so the comp competitors are not there. So it's, it's, it's always easy to see if the competitors are there because if you look at, the, at what people search, for, for example, um, uh, pharmacy, right? In Spanish, there are a lot of searches, farmacias. If you go to your telephone and you type farmacias, you're gonna look, you're gonna find like two or three in all New York. And knowing that uh, there are so many Hispanics right there, and when you put the same thing in English, you're gonna look a lot, right? But only there you can see in many industries, it's still, back to this day, healthcare. If you put healthcare, you're gonna find all the way there, like a lot of dots. If you put seguros medicos, none. And a lot of people are searching on their telephones. So that's how we start. So at the end, you're actually looking for, for you're actually using data and technology to access all this, okay? And uh, let me tell you just a little about uh, Prisa because Marcus started before I open it to some questions from all of you guys. I don't know, are we right on time? Okay. So, uh, Group of Prisa is, like Marcus was saying, probably the largest media company in Spanish and Portuguese in the world. They own TV, 27 radio stations, El País, Diarios, and so different newspapers in sports newspapers, etc. And of course, they own a big piece of education called Santillana. So if you went to school in Latin America and you were uh, in any way at that school, okay, you probably have a Santillana book, okay, in the last 25 years. And the like, and algebra, and this, and this, like, I can tell you, well, Paul, uh, it, it gets back into my nightmares, okay, like those, like, Santillana names, okay, it's like bad. Uh, so, we actually are trying to bring together a set, we just did it in Spain, we put together uh, something I, did last year with a group of uh, newspapers in English, we created a consortium of newspapers. And that consortium, what one of the main things was to get out of the traditional way of thinking and to get into creating a profile of people that actually reads news and access information. Why? Because that's like finding your own oil well. 
So we did the same in Spain. We just did the same in Spain. We pushed it since last year uh, with the help of Google. Google is sometimes evil and sometimes it's nice and it's just the way it is. It's okay. It's like, like the IRS. Like, it's, uh, some days when they, uh, the IRS is nice when they send me a check, they're not nice when they call. Okay? So, yes, it's like the IRS. So, uh, and with the help of them, and then we put all the data because we understand the value of data. So, as publishers, we l content producers, we know that we're generating a lot of data. We know that our consumers of content, they come to us and leave data with us. And that's got some big value. That's what is going to come back and give back those cents and to turn them back into dollars. It's what's going to be big value. The Latin American environment, it's when you get into, instead of just the 40 or 45 million, or if you believe the non-official, the 60 million Latinos in the US, okay, census says only 40 something, but I really believe that there's another 18 there, someplace. Uh, but then you go into 500. And if you add that Portuguese, then you actually really become very big, okay? But if let's just stay with the Spanish, it's like 500 million people. 500 million people that now have a way to vote commercially. I'm not talking about just politics, but commercially, they can vote that they like Pili. And that's the show they want to see, and that's how they want to receive the news uh, regarding new entertainment, okay? Because that's what they want. Uh, there's no boundaries. She can actually get into all that audiences. That's the beauty of what the technology and the web has done. It's more easy said than done. Okay, don't, don't get me wrong. It's not easy to do it. So, uh, Prisa has been trying to push